you know what I love? Ants. They are tiny, super powerful, and can carry between 10 and 50 times their own body weight. And get this, they can run the equivalent of over 50 miles per hour. You know, if they were human-sized, that is. <laughs> Small, strong, and powerful, which just happens to be exactly what I want in my power supply. I want an integrated solution with a small form factor, high power, and great efficiency. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is John Woodward from Maxim Integrated, and we're going to chat about the industry's smallest power modules. They're tiny, they're efficient, and powerful, just kind of like ants. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about Maxim's Himalaya Micro Slick Solutions, the industry's smallest power modules. Hey, John, thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, so John, we're talking about power modules today, but before we jump into the details, let's talk about the forces behind our changing needs in the power domain. Yeah, it's changing a lot, interestingly enough. Across all kinds of markets, we're seeing a lot more intelligence being put into almost everything. Customers are looking for the intelligence of their phones and everything they use, everything they look at, whether it's at work or at home, and they're shrinking everything at the same time. So we see shrinking space, not being able to increase that thermal budget. So things are getting smaller. We're adding intelligence, which is going to complicate the designs and increase the amount of power that is needed and hence heat. So they need to find efficient, ways of getting that power to increase that intelligence that they're trying to add to the system. Also, we're seeing a lot of harsh mechanical, electrical, and thermal environments that these are being placed in factories. So you're adding a lot more intelligence than ever before in areas where there wasn't any. So we have to find a way to keep things cool and robust. Okay, so John, is this in one specific area? No, it's really wide ranging. It's across multiple markets and a lot of different applications. We've seen it start in the factory automation area and building automation, distribution automation, but now in, you know, GPS trackers, fleet management type devices and transport automation and UPS charging, security and surveillance, you know, the IoT connecting everything together is adding a lot more intelligence. Even power tools has seen a lot more intelligence being put into power tools and also audio video equipment. Okay, so specifically, what are you doing to help those power challenges? Well, we recommend a power module. Okay. And if you're not familiar with what that is, let me explain a little bit. So we consider a power module a self-contained power solution. And we try to integrate as many of the things as possible to make a really small solution with high power density and really make it reliable. So we're going to add things like a switching power supply or a controller. We're going to add the FETs. We're going to add some compensation maybe some other passives, but definitely an inductor. Okay, cool. So what is Maxim offering in the form of power modules? Today we have our Himalaya power module family. We focus on a few key things to bring some advantages to our customers. One is try to minimize the external components needed. So minimal bomb is needed to actually create a full power supply. We try to create some pin-to-pin -pin compatible solutions so that you can go between voltage and current relatively quickly. You don't need to change the schematic or the layout if you need to change an input voltage range for instance, or go from 1.7 amps to 3.5 amps, you can do so relatively quickly. Himalaya technology actually delivers very high efficiency for our industrial customers as well as others. We also offer a really easy way to go from IC or module, depending on how you want to manage your supply and your platform. So if you want to go from an IC in one case to a module or vice versa, it's easy to tell with our portfolio because we add an M to the part number and that's how we create the module. So if you use the max 15462 and that was the IC, the max M15462 is the module. Uh, so it's easily to move back and forth. Okay. Also, as you see on the bottom there, you can see we have a portfolio that covers a wide range of power levels. So we have our 5 volt nominal line, which goes from 4 to 6 amps. We have a 4 to 42 volt range, which goes from 100 milliamps all the way up to 5 amps. From 4.5 to 60 volts, we go from 1.7 amps up to 3.5 amps. And at 76 volts, we have our first 1 amp power module offering. Okay, so John, what excites you about power modules? And I just have to say, that's either a really big ant or a really small power module. Yeah. 
That's what we're excited about. It's a really small power module. Cool. We've recently introduced our Max M17532 and our Max M15462, which are our Himalaya Micro Slick power modules. Okay, so what's cool about these new parts? It's really in the packaging. So traditionally, we had a portfolio of system in package or SIP modules, which integrated the IC, it integrated the inductor and some of the passives. We always use fully shielded inductors. We try to focus on a typical height of about 2 point eight millimeters max. It's basically like a QFN, pins around the periphery, easy to lay out, easy to create nice thick traces for the power. Some standard package sizes, six and a half by ten and nine by fifteen. Okay. Then we move to our new micro level IC or micro slick package where we've really integrated the inductor and the IC, again fully shielded but really focused on size and simplicity with a QFN like package. So you can see here it's 2.6 by 3 millimeters. Very, very small. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of benefits will I see as a designer here? For our family, we really have reduced a very, very small solution. It's up to 2.25 smaller than a typical solution with those power levels out on the market today. Wow. And we have peak efficiencies of 90%, which is very important, as I mentioned, for that thermal budget you have to deal with when shrinking your design space and increasing your power. Efficiency is going to be a key thing for designers. We've integrated the inductor, which is usually the most difficult part in a switching regulator to try and figure out the correct inductor. So we've integrated that. And then we've made it rugged. We comply with vibration and shock standards, as well as making them CISPR 22 compliant. Okay. So, John, what kind of use cases are you seeing here? Sensors is a big, big user of these. Sure. Because they're so small and sensors are so small. In this case, you can see an optical sensor, which depending on the power level could use our 100 milliamp version or our 300 milliamp version of these micro slick modules. They basically take the 24 volts from the main supply line and convert it down for the different components used in the sensor, whether it be the microcontroller or the ADC, some of the front end circuits. Okay, so let's look under the hood and get into some details. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Both parts are relatively similar in terms of feature set. We've integrated a synchronous internally compensated with the inductor switching regulator. So you add very few in terms of external components. You set the output voltage from 0.9 to 5 volts using the external resistors. You have some programmability features. The real big benefit is that 2.6 by 3 by 1.5 millimeter solution. It's an ultra small solution. Again, 2.25x smaller than what we've seen out on the market for a similar power level. Very high efficiency, very rugged, again, shock and vibration certified, as well as EMI. It's really great for those space-constrained applications and across almost every market you can think of. And one other way that we found a lot of interest is as an LDO replacement. So if you think of it where you have a thermal budget, you have your design all set up, and you start powering it up and it starts to get too hot, a great way to increase efficiency is to replace an LDO with a switching regulator. These 100 and 300 milliamp regulators are great ways to reduce Reduce an LDO, increase your efficiency, and because our solution size is so small, you're not really increasing the area in which you're swapping out an LDO for a switching regulator. Sure, that makes absolute sense. All right, so you mentioned EMI. What's the performance look like there? Here's some typical plots. This one is for our Max M17532 or the 100 milliamp version. We have conducted emissions on the left and radiated emissions on the right. Those fixed lines, which are nice and straight, those are the limit lines, and you can see the measured data which is that squiggly stuff all at the bottom. Yeah. We have good clearance between the limit line and the actual data. So if you use our layout guidelines, we make it a lot easier for the customers to actually pass EMI from the first test. Very cool. Okay, John, the proof is in the pudding. Do you guys have any customer feedback you can share? Yeah, we're really excited about this. Sick, Alexander Boley, he has actually come out and said, that without these micro slick modules from Maxim, they could not offer the new tiny sensors that they're building right now in such small houses. Wow. It's really a fantastic testament to how we're improving the solution size of power for our customers. Very cool. Well, I'm going to click that link right now and get some more information about your slick solution. So I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, John. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for coming out. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find more information about Maxim's Himalaya Micro Slick Solutions, the industry's smallest power modules. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword 
EE Journal. <laughs>